I think we can safely say, welcome to our society, Brother Henry. It's a great honor, Clive. What about the committee? Oh, mere formality. You represent all that our society prides itself upon. Honesty, integrity, <laughs> and a strong sense of morality in one's personal conduct. One does one's best, Clive. Indeed, Henry. <laughs> the society of gentlemen's gentlemen stands for all that is great in this country of ours. Oh, indeed, Clive. I'm very honoured. Thank you. No need for thanks, Henry. We need positive men like you, men of style and distinction. GGG. -G -G. I don't know. I can't remember. Well, you better shift yourself, haven't you, and take it out to him. Pound residence? Yes. Oh, just hold on one minute, please. Teddy, have you seen Mr. Compton? No, Miss Paula. Didn't I just have some tea? That's Jim's cup, Terry, outside in the mule. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember now. <laughs> Does he take sugar? I'm so sorry. Uh, yes, would you like me to tell him to ring you back? Oh, good old murder a cup of tea. I'm spitting feathers out there. Hey, get a couple of sheets. I'll knock you up a duvet. Yeah. <laughs> Do you take sugar, Jim? No. Nah. Oh, right. I'd better take this out before I forget. <laughs> Connie, you've got that funny look in your eye. You want to marry me, James? What it, will you stop proposing to me? Was it leap year every year in the Philippines or what? Yes, right. Well, thank you. I'll tell him to ring you back. Bye-bye. But you only want to marry me for my passport. You're a silly boy, James. I'm the best thing in rubber gloves you'll ever find. <laughs> rubber gloves? We'll see you now in a Pirelli calendar. Nothing on apart from a pair of rubber gloves. <laughs> London? Are you trying to make a monkey out of me? How can I improve on what nature's already done? <laughs> What do you want, Paula? <laughs> you deliberately squirted water in that man's hat in a deliberate attempt at embarrassing me. I did what? Mr. Compton. What, woman? Excuse me, uh, Mr. Lane has just rang you. Mr. Lane? You mean Mrs. Lane, of course. No, it was definitely a man, Mr. Compton. Oh. Oh, uh, th thank you, Paula. I... What was I shouting at you for? Because you're a prep. <laughs> Yes, yes, of course. And don't you forget it. <laughs> He's going off his trolley, that geezer. I don't think his mate, the one with the wet bowl of rats, a full lorry load of bricks, Oliver. Gentlemen, gentlemen. <laughs> oh, here you are, Jim. <laughs> I just took you out a cup of tea, but you're not there. You're here. I ain't. I've gone upstairs for a kip. Oh. Oh. Teddy! <laughs> <laughs> you don't half make me laugh. You're really funny. Yeah, wish I'd make Mr. Compton laugh. You're not that funny. <laughs> oh, you forgot the sugar, this. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Yes, all right. I'll be there. Oh, there you are, Henry. Afternoon, sir. My, uh, 
My white dinner jacket seems to have gone missing. Oh, uh, oh, oh, yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> I, I've just had it cleaned. Oh, well, that was all. You all right, Henry? All right, sir. Not worried or upset about anything? Oh, of course not, sir. I'm fine. <laughs> if it's any problems with the staff... Oh, no, sir, really. The staff are no problem. Not even Jim? No, sir. <laughs> well, talk to me if you need to. Thank you, sir. So, oh, look at them. <laughs> How the paper boy got her through the letterbox, I've no idea. <laughs> hey, imagine waking up to her in the morning, mate, eh? I bet you let her take the top off your eh? I don't really like eggs, Jim. <laughs> Sometimes I don't believe you, Tell. Are you still here, London? No, I'm miles away in Yorkshire. What? Tasty Tracy comes from Cleck Eaton. <laughs> her hobbies are riding, golf, and looking after old age pensioners. <laughs> Give her a ring. <laughs> you, laddie, are insolent and lazy. Oh, come on, Henry, say what you mean. Don't beat about the bush. You're an idle little good for nothing git. <laughs> you won't be frank with her, eh? You won't go one way or the other. You sit on that fence. When you fall off and break both legs, don't come running to me. <laughs> and what are you doing in here? Me? Out. What? Get back to your work. He's on his tea break, Mr. I Compton. don't wish to hear any excuses, thank you, Paula. And will you stop that incessant hammy woman? Leave it out, Henry. She ain't done nothing wrong. This is grafting. Which is more what than I you say, are. Um... Just finish your tea and get back to your work. And furthermore. <laughs> I think he's heading for a breakdown. I think he's been watching EastEnders. <laughs> Might have been that phone call. Did you say it was a geezer? Yes, a Mr. Lip. Oh, do you know that's the name of his new lady love? I never knew he had one. Oh, yeah, she rings him up quite a lot. That must have been a father or a brother. Oh, you don't suppose, do you, that he's put her in the club? <laughs> Not unless she paid her own entrance fee. <laughs> You know what they say, don't you? Many a good tune played on an old fiddle. <laughs> Henry, what do you think, eh? South East London's answer to Richard Gere. If I have to do, I suppose. You suppose? I think I look the business. All cop likes it. <laughs> you can see that. <laughs> you look like a second-rate disco dancer. <laughs> disco dancer? Oh, disco's here. Disco's there. <laughs> well, who's a little mover then? Uh, hello, miss. Uh... Well, that's the first time I've ever seen you stuck for words, James. I can see all your fillings. You look staggering, darling. I'm not sure if that's a compliment or not. It's a compliment, all right, darling. Ah, oh, that'll be Tony. The door, please, James. All right, darling. Would you please stop calling me darling? Hello, darling. <laughs> you look sensational. Absolutely sensational. Thank you, kind sir. Polish her. Evening, Tony. Hello, sir. Lovely evening for it. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, my darling, you look terrific. Terrific, sensational and staggering, and the night is still young. Staggering? Who said that? Ah, uh, well, time to go. <laughs> Henry, would you see Sarah and Tony to the car, please? Of course, sir. Yeah, you'll do. Nice whistle as it happens. Jim? Have you noticed anything strange about Henry today? Cubner, I notice something strange about Henry every day. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Well, he has a bit of... 
Well, uh, good night, Henry. Good night, sir. Have a nice evening. Thank you, Henry. Good night, Henry. Might see it down the old disco a bit later on then, eh? <laughs> well, I only hear your London's answer to Beau Brummel, that's all. The master is waiting. So's the barmaid down the free ferrets. <laughs> you wouldn't get her through the letterbox either. <laughs> Henry. <laughs> Thank you, James. No problem, darling. If I ever hear you address Miss Palmer again in that manner, driver, I'll have your head on a plate. You don't have to practice being a tosser, do you, eh? That's come natural to you. <laughs> All right, young man. Don't keep my daughter waiting. Sir? I'll sort you... I'll sort it out later. Well, very nice of you, Governor. Much obliged. I don't normally take tips. <laughs> you want some advice, son? Well, it depends who's giving it. I only give advice to those I think worthy of it. You've got a wonderful way of turning things around, haven't you, Governor? All right, I'm all ears. Now, it's no accident the good Lord gave you two ears and one mouth. You do twice as much listening as you do talking, and you won't go far wrong. And remember what I told you. Up here for the thinking. And down there for the dancing, I know, yeah. <laughs> Looks like Tony will never get the balance right. Have you ever given him advice? No. Nope. Pick us up about half past eleven. Yeah, half eleven. All right, Gav. Have a good night. You're back early. Yeah. Thought I'd keep Henry company. Well, that makes two of us. I stayed late for the same reason. <laughs> Lucky old Henry. So where is he then? Out. Left the house a couple of minutes after you. Didn't say where he's going though. Don't sound like our Henry, does it? Mm. Do you walk or get a cab? Oh, cab, I think I'm not really sure. Hmm. We've got to try it. Well, even if we do find out where he's gone, what then? One step at a time, though. Good. Oh, yes, hello, taxis. Mr. Palmer here. Yes, I have a, a rather large account with your company. Yes, I'm trying to find out one of my staff got picked up early on this evening, and I want to find out where you're taking him. Yeah, well, I understand that. Yeah, well, oh, <clears throat> yes, I, I realise that. Well, okay, listen, you've got my number. Just phone me back. Yes, yes, no, I insist. If you want to check, just phone me back. Thank you so much. That didn't sound a bit like Mr Palmer. It sounded more like Mr Palmer than you would have done. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> where have I heard that before? <laughs> If only you'd told me, Lila. Oh, I know, Henry. I'm so sorry. It's all my fault. We, we, we work it all out. Oh, I hope so. He can be a very vindictive man. I wish we'd get a bit closer. I can't lip read the back of his head. Ah, <laughs> oh, what a nice, cosy little scene. Right, let's get down to business. I can't stay long. I've left the kids on their own. Oh, kids! You, you never said anything about children, Lila. Oh, Henry, I'm so Four sorry. Four of them we got, I... pal. Four of them. All crying for their mum. Uh, Mr. Light, I had no idea that Lila was still a married woman. Yeah. Well, for all the grief and aggro you've caused me and our kids, how about some compensation? Compensation? You mean money? <laughs> Henry's got himself involved. Involved? Yeah, well in it. Right now, other cases are her husband. We shouldn't be sticking our noses into Henry's business, you know, Jim. You're right. Should we go? No! <laughs> we'll just wait a few more minutes. A thousand pounds? And that's letting you off cheap, I reckon. Oh. A thousand? Pay up, or I'll have to tell your boss all about it. You'll cut very little ice with my employer, Mr Lane. He's a very understanding man. And what about the chaps from the Society of Gentlemen's Gentlemen? The GGs you're always telling Lila all about. They won't be so understanding, what with their high morals and principles. 
Oh, no. Not the GGs. <laughs> yes. A thousand pounds saved you an awful lot of grief and embarrassment. Oh, but this is nothing short of blackmail. Blackmail? No. This is insurance for our kids. Well, do I start making the phone calls or what? All right. Tomorrow morning, here, opening time. I'll be here. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like a private word with my wife, alone, while we try and pick up the pieces. Well? Here's to you, Mr. Compton. Cool, you were brilliant, Jack. You nearly had me in tears. You weren't about yourself. <laughs> Well, well, well. Henry's got himself fitted up, hasn't he? Last orders at the bar. Your last orders, please. Oh, my God. I'm going to be late to pick the governor Ooh. up at the other place. Come on. Excuse me, my Are you not a farmer, Shepherd? Yes, yeah, matter of fact, I am. I'm a bit late. It's too late, I'm afraid. It's past midnight. What do you mean, too late? I mean, young man, that your boss has had to accept the offer of a lift from one of the other guests. Oh, no! Oh, yes. And I can assure you, he is not pleased with you. Not pleased at all. Better get back and make your excuses. Well, it'll be, fa it'll be fast asleep by the time I'll get back. <laughs> You're going to be shot at dawn, then, aren't you? <laughs> Tell Mr. Palmer where we were last night. How can I? What, and drop Henry in it? Right. Well, I'm going to take this into him, and I hope it puts him in a better mood. Jim, if you had married me, maybe Mr. Palmer wouldn't sack you. Well, I suppose not. Jim. That's all. I'm gonna miss you, you know. Leave <laughs> it out, mate. Morning. Right, laddie. The master wants to see you now. He is livid. Come on. Uh. Here, look, don't you think we'd better leave it till he's had his breakfast? You'll only make him worse if you keep him waiting. Right. Hop. Two, three. <laughs> Bye, Jim. <laughs> Well? Well, I... I just copped up real bad. And that's it, is it? Well, I don't know what else I can say. I told you to pick us up at half past eleven. I had to be back here in time for an important call from the States. Well, you didn't say anything about it. I shouldn't, bloody. We'll have to. I don't have to tell you all the ins and outs of a nanny goat's... Oh, no, all right. I oh, know. <laughs> I'm out of order, aren't I? I mean, I'm as out of order as a King's Cross Picasso. <laughs> So what's the SP then? Tell me about his cock up. Well, look, I left you. I thought I've got a bit of time. I thought I'll, I'll come back. I'll come back and watch a bit of telly or something. And I put my feet up and I fell a kip. I overslept. I'm sorry. Too late then, wasn't it? And that's it, is it? Well, look, I wish I could tell you something else. I just cocked up. Well, at least you didn't insult my intelligence by telling me you got lost or the, the roller broke down or you got stopped by the law. <laughs> thought never entered my head, Governor. <laughs> Nothing else to say? No. Paula, step in here a moment, will you? Oh, great. If you're going to sack me, I don't need an audience. I mean, just fire me. Go on, it's what your elbow's for, isn't it? Go ahead, Paula. Jim, I've told Mr. Palmer why you were late last night. You done what? You burk. Why didn't you tell me? If Paula hadn't, you'd have been for the tin tack. Uh, well, I, I mean, how could I tell you? I mean, I, I didn't want to... I didn't... You didn't want to drop Henry in it, right? Well, no, I didn't. It's his private life, isn't it? Right. Now, as I see it, we've got to get Henry off the hook without him knowing. Paula, I want you to find some way of delaying Henry. And as for you and me, well, I think a little double act is the answer. Yeah? What, a touch of the old cannon and balls? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not so much of the cannon. Yeah? Do 
Detective Inspector Cannon. And this is Sergeant London. Detective Sergeant London. Oh. I think we'd better have a little chat. A little chat? A chat? What about? Blackmail. Blackmail. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at that. Did you see that, Inspector? Assaulting a police officer. Here, what's going on? What is going on, sunshine? Unless you do the right thing, you're going to spend your autumn years behind bars. Oh, my God! Mr Compton has made a false statement. I thought this one was going a bit easy. All right. What's the right thing? Sit still and be educated. Educated. <laughs> I still reckon I should have been a detective inspector. Rubbish. I've got the age and the looks for it. Hold on, here he comes. I'm sorry for the delay. Somebody had hidden my hat. That's all right, Henry. <laughs> yeah, no worry. Is everything all right, Lila? Henry, everything's just wonderful. Perfect, in fact. Yeah, Lila and me have found each other again. For, for found each other? Yeah, we, we managed to pick up the pieces, haven't we, dear? Forgive and forget. Yes, dear. Forgive and forget. You're forgiven, and we'll forget. <laughs> Go on. Just take the money and go. I, 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 I don't quite know what to say. Oh, just go. <laughs> I, well, uh, goodbye and uh, good luck with the pieces. <laughs> forgive and forget. Yeah, you and your bright ideas. <laughs> He's late again. Jim's always late, I think. <laughs> Come on, you lot. Let's be having you. Ah. I see we are the usual one short again. I... Oh, how good of you to join us, you lazy tyke. Wait, don't start in. Look, I'm not going to tell you again, lady. It's Mr. Compton to you. Now, come on, get into line. Chop, chop. Oh, turn it into in, Into line now. Turn it in, Henry. I, I don't know how you managed to wriggle out of the trouble you were in with the master, but suffice to say, it was probably due to a good word from me on your behalf that you still have your position. Oh, thank you very much. Now, don't you go and give me cause to regret... I, what are you all smiling for? We are H-A-P-P-Y. <laughs> what have you got to be happy about? Oh, it's nice to see your old self again. I'll give you my old self. Connie, I want to see every drape in the house taken down and cleaned. Boiler, the guest rooms are in an horrible state. I want to see them gleaming by the end of the day. Terry, that rear lawn looks like a football pitch, and I don't mean Wembley. And as for you, London, that car is a flipping disgrace. Music to me is. <laughs> <laughs>